This is where all your focus needs to really be. Rotisserie chicken done at home. Seems like a bit of an undertaking when you look at it, but really not that bad. All right, welcome to Kitchen Captain. I'm Ian Walsh, and today we're gonna do a juicy rotisserie chicken. We're gonna take this bird all the way through a brine to a homemade rub and cook it in this rotisserie oven, and then we're gonna learn how to break this thing down properly. Let's go. Okay, phase one for our chicken is we wanna make a brine. This thing can sit in there for a few hours, but ideally you leave it in overnight up to around 12 hours. And to make our brine, we're gonna do a half a cup of salt and a half a cup of brown sugar. To our brown sugar and salt, we're gonna add about a cup of hot water. And we don't wanna use a bunch of hot water because we actually want this to just dissolve and then we're gonna add it to ice cold water that we're gonna put our bird in to soak overnight. And we don't want the water that our bird is gonna sit in to get warm at all. We just want that thing ice cold. It's not going on a thermal vacation. It's gonna stay chilled overnight in the water. We're gonna do about a good little sprinkle of peppercorns and one bay leaf. We're going with Turkish bay leaf today. I'm sure there's a better scientific explanation to this process, but to my very base level knowledge, all we're doing is dissolving salt and sugar. Now we're gonna take a pot that you're very confident you can fit your chicken into and have it completely submerged in our brine. So kind of eyeball it up. I'm pretty sure that's gonna fit in here. We're gonna fill this with ice, add some water. We're gonna add our sugar, salt, peppercorns, and bay leaf mixture in and get everything out of there. Important next step here is do a little finger check and make sure this water isn't warm. If you added your salt and sugar mixture into here and it brings the temp up a lot and does not feel cold, don't put that chicken in here. We don't want that thing to start cooking slowly in some warmish water. So we're gonna let that chill down and then we're gonna put our chicken in. We have our whole bird. We're just gonna trim off some of this excess little fat knobs and get this thing prepped. Okay. Take this big hen and you're gonna go breast side. So the top, top of the wings, breast, those are gonna go down. So get that into your brine. Let the air bubbles come out of the cavity. Make sure your water covers it. You're gonna take a bowl. Give it a little extra weight. Make sure you get the air out of the bowl too. And that'll just keep it completely submerged. Now once you have your chicken in your brine and it's completely submerged, we're gonna cover it up, put it in the fridge, and that's gonna soak for 12 hours. Okay, before we just slaughter our kitchen by dragging this chicken out of our brine, we're gonna make our rub. First step to the rub is paprika. Kind of just eyeballing how much I think for a whole chicken, but there will be in the description below a much better suited recipe. Next to bat is garlic powder. After garlic powder comes onion powder, kosher salt. Put your elbow into it. We're gonna add some pepper. Remember that neck turn. A little bit of time, give these things a little mix. After a little mental debate, instead of getting chicken everywhere, I'm gonna do a sheet pan, cookie rack, raise that thing up and try to drain it. This is where all your focus needs to really be in not getting chicken juice all over your entire kitchen floor. Okay, so give it a little wiggle, get that juice off and then onto the cookie sheet. We're gonna go breast up. Okay, the first step for our chicken is to pat it dry before we lube it up with some oil, because allegedly the saying is, the drier your bird, the more crispy the skin on the outside. And even though we're gonna do this rotisserie style, we do want a nice crispy exterior to go along with its juicy interior. So we have our bird dried off, now we're just gonna drizzle some oil, or pour. I guess that was a little bit more than a drizzle. And kind of rub this thing all around. Don't be shy either. Get your hand on the inside, the bottom, that undercarriage. Really gotta figure out this sliding cutting board scenario. 
Okay, now we're gonna get to rubbing. We're gonna apply this from a little bit of height here to distribute it evenly. Also gonna push that forward so this rub stops going on my feet. And we kinda wanna get everywhere on this thing. Get the inside. Inside, the outside, the undercarriage. Okay, now we're gonna tie this bird off to make sure nothing's wobbling around as it spins in the rotisserie oven. Halfway, crisscross in front. Around our little wing, wing dings. Underneath this back little knuckle here. And in doing so is keeping the skin wrapped around the front and the back so it doesn't peel up as it's cooking around our legs. We need this kind of tight to keep it from flopping all over. Now we are going to try to skewer this thing centered. We don't want too much on that side or too much on that side because then it's gonna start wobbling around all weird. Get it in there, give it some weight. Do not catch your palms at the top. Let her rip through. It looks pretty centered. To the rotisserie oven. Slide it up. Slide it into place. Take about an hour. So we will follow this very intently. And pretty soon, this thing is gonna be glistening. Okay, we're gonna try to time a breast facing us and pause this thing and do a temp check. We're aiming for like 165 and up. I think we're good. Okay, now we're gonna take some space gloves that come with this rotisserie machine, pop them on so we can keep the palms of our hands intact. And we're gonna try to exit this chicken very carefully. Oh, getting bunch of juice everywhere, which went relatively well. Definitely a hot, hot bird. Oh, that almost went everywhere. I'm gonna do my best to not burn myself here. This thing's hot, this is very hot. I'm basically gonna start with the legs and the thighs. I'm gonna open it up and find the joint. It's so damn hot. I'm gonna go cleaver. Get near that joint, give her a little whack. Other one. Wings. Definitely like third degree burning my fingers right now, without, without a doubt. We're gonna go in right along the back here and then go on either side of the in the spine below, which is what you remove when you spatchcock these things. There we go, get rid of our spine. We have our breast, and we'll do these in twos. This is a juicy bird, and hot, very hot. I've definitely lost feeling in the right index finger. I think it's worth it. Let's try this out. I'm gonna fire away at a breast and the wing. Go full caveman mode here. And cleaver. Does look good though. Looks perfect. Let's give this a run. It's still scalding hot. Burnt the roof of my mouth. Delicious, but scalding hot. It's good. That's so hot. My fingers should have really told that story, but they're numb from the cutting process. Burnt fingers, burnt mouth. Totally worth it. Delicious chicken. Okay, let's try this little wing ding. Mm. One of my favorite parts. That's what it seems like a bit of an undertaking when you look at it, but it's really not that bad. That's delicious. Aside from the third degree burns on my finger and now the loss of feeling on the roof of my mouth, pretty damn good. Rotisserie chicken done at home. Thanks for watching. The shirt stood up to the rotisserie chicken test. Finger did not, roof of mouth did not, shirt did.